This set has been a roller coaster from its conception in the rumor mill to the fake leaked pictures to the final version finally being shown at a LEGO reveal event. And now I have it in my hands and I was very disappointed to find out that my particular set was missing two different pieces which I'll talk about later. It was quite an experience and I actually have a weird extra piece that totally doesn't belong in this set either. So we'll definitely talk about that later in the review. But this set to me is somewhat of a disaster. $70 for 492 pieces. That is quite a high price for something that really doesn't present a lot of play value outside of just smashing figures together. Its official set number is 75216. Of course, its name, Snoke's Throne Room, and you probably already knew that from the title, ages 8 to 14. The five glorious minifigures, which is the reason LEGO probably priced this set so high, are Rey, Kylo Ren, Supreme Leader Snoke, and two elite Praetorian guards, all from Star Wars The Last Jedi. A good slew of minifigures. I'm not going to argue with that one, but I think the set overall is lacking. I've had some major issues with this set, but let's go ahead and take a look at the figures first. And we'll go through the set as I try not to be biased because honestly, I'm boiling inside on this one. This one had so much potential. Since it is Snoke's throne room, it does seem fitting that we take a look at Supreme Leader Snoke first, and this is a pretty neat figure if you weren't able to pick up the $160 First Order Star Destroyer from late 2017, you're definitely going to be happy here as you can save $100 just to get this minifigure in this $70 set, which is still pretty crazy for this set, but we'll talk about that later as I said before. It's a nice Snoke, I believe it's the same as the one that we did get in that First Order Star Destroyer, but if you don't have one, definitely a good way to pick him up. I like him, I think he looks good. The only problem is he's not quite as tall as you would think he would be obviously in the movie he's a bit taller than the regular characters in lego they couldn't quite get there so it's kind of a shame maybe at some point they'll come out with a leg piece that is a little bit taller than this i think that would be rather interesting for lego to do as they've done with the shorter legs they've kind of come with a midsection with posable legs maybe they'll come out with something a little bit taller but not quite as tall as the ones that they put on woody from toy story so right alongside supreme leader snoke is his apprentice if you will kylo ren this is a fancy looking Kylo Ren. He's got kind of that mesh pattern to his torso. I love that chainmail armor look he's got. It's just incredible chainmail armor on the back kind of look, mesh look. I don't know. I like it. No arm printing or anything special like that. No leg print. Ah, there's a small leg print there. Just a just a tad there on the top of the legs, a little waist in there as well. Underneath the hair piece you'll find on the back, his second face. A little bit more calm, but still very angry looking, which I really like that Lego did. They really made him look angry in both faces, which is pretty fitting, I would say, for uh, Kyla Ren here. And of course, he's got his regular cross saber there. And just because I'm the worst LEGO YouTuber reviewer out there, I'm going to keep you waiting for those Praetorian Guards. This is the Rey minifigure. Pretty neat minifigure. She comes with her standard little blue lightsaber. You've probably seen this in a million sets. And she's wearing some pretty cool robes. She's got tan arms. Pretty standard figure as far as I'm concerned. A very nice hairpiece. And if you don't have this figure, it's a nice way to pick it up. You'll pull her hairpiece off and you'll find that she does have that double-sided face. A little bit of an angrier look, but not quite the Kylo Ren look that we had on him. So she's not like making that, you know, no teeth, no open mouth, but still a neat figure and very detailed if you don't have one. Definitely another good way to pick it up. Let's be honest here though. Ever since we first saw the Praetorian Guards in The Last Jedi about six months ago when it was out in theaters, I think we've all been waiting for this moment for Lego to finally release the Lego Praetorian Guard minifigure. This set gives us two of those minifigures and there's a rumored battle pack for 2019. I don't know how much weight that holds and I'm sure by the time uh, some people are watching this video, that word will kind of be out and we'll know whether or not that happened, but still kind of an interesting concept, so maybe you want to hold off on spending $70 if you're just trying to get these. But anyway, a very nice print on the front. They use the new leg piece that they've been using for just a few months now, since the beginning of 2018. I really like the way it looks on the Praetorian Guard here. It's got printing all the way down the back of it, which works excellently. You can see on the front side there, very nice prints as well. Very kind of similar on both sides. There's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, he's got some shoulder pads as well which are nice and red they all kind of color match together and then the helmet design is very nice as well i like the way lego has done that they both do have the same helmet design just in case you were wondering for some reason they're the exact same figure so very nice the shoulder pads don't really get in the way of the arms which is nice obviously you can't lift them up all the way but they do still allow for quite a bit of articulation which is kind of what you wanted to see out of this and i think lego did a good job of allowing the arms still to to move around while having those shoulder pad there for the additional detail underneath you'll find a red head so that's what you got underneath nothing special under there anyway 
They do have some weapons. Let's actually take a look at their weapons. I, I want to show them so you can actually see them. Here are the two figures with their weapons, just to give you an idea of what they'll be wielding in the battle between the Praetorian Guards and Rey and Kylo Ren. Very nice selection here of weapons. I really like. I think my favorite one here is going to be this like ball on chain type weapon where they can swing it around. And Very awesome weapons, but I just wanted to be able to show you them kind of all at once there. Very, very cool. Quick side note, if you remember from the movie, the chain that wrapped around Ray's lightsaber, that's what that is supposed to be. So it doesn't really work as well as it does in universe, but it still has that same effect. For a set named Snoke's throne room, it isn't much of a room, but we will take a look at the throne in what we'll call the room. So Snoke's throne room has a throne. It sits on a very large circular UFO-like area, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's accurate to the movie. It looks rather nice. It has stickers on it, so if you don't want to put those stickers on or you have trouble doing so, I would be fine with leaving them off. Like, they don't add too much detail. They're just kind of, like, extra depth to it. You can imagine what it would look like if it didn't have the stickers. It would just be plain gray, so you can go for either look that you find appealing there, but I prefer to do it the way LEGO does it, and I throw the stickers on there. You'll find his throne is rather nice as well. The design of it is simple yet effective. I find the feature where it can pop out of the panel thing there to be interesting. Like, it's not something that useful, I would say, but it's interesting. I think the main reason they let you do this is just in case you need to fix this feature in here, which we'll take a look at in a minute. It's not really anything practical on the back of the box. He's just kind of shown sitting over here on that. So I don't really understand. Like, like it's not like he can fly around in his chair as far as we know. Although, they did put some red studs on there. So I guess kids could pretend like that's, like, thrust coming out of the bottom of it. Man, I don't know. Like, there's definitely some, some playability there with that. But I still find it to be an odd feature. If you didn't notice, you can spin his chair does make the noise as it kind of clicks into place it's not a freely spinning chair but very nice that you can spin it and with that being said you can of course have snoke sit in his chair so there he is i'll drop right in there prepare yourself for some spoilers because in the last jedi snoke dies anyway so now he's in there you can see he's rather small in his chair which is kind of cool but he also like i feel like the minifigure compared to the movie is just not tall enough and i feel like the three long legs are like too tall like the one that uh woody from toy story had i feel like that would have been too tall so i don't really know i guess lego did what was best here and they gave him the shorter legs but man i feel like uh, he doesn't really fit into his chair the way he does in the movie to me anyway around back there's some extra little detailing and just kind of random stuff on there so for what it's worth it's there but it's not all uh anything Thing to write home about. Anyway, the next feature we'll take a look at is kind of integrated with Snoke. Of course, we can take Rey here and we'll place her on that kind of black tile area there. You can see the studs right at the end of that. And basically, you can have Rey be pulled towards Snoke, which is actually pretty cool. It's a pretty cool feature. You can pull on this red little ball back here and it will pull Rey towards Snoke, which is very awesome. And so it works very smoothly. It is very smooth. It's a little bit tight, if that makes any sense. Like, it's hard to get to to go particularly easily, but it does work. So there is that. And, I mean, obviously, she doesn't fly up and float up like in the movie, but it's close enough that it, I think it works. Like, it's kind of cool in that respect that kids can kind of recreate that little scene from the movie. Also in the same floor space here, we have these, basically the incinerator holes, I think, that one of the Praetorian guards fell down in the movie and got all chopped up. And those are on both sides with some extra little pieces on them for detail. They look pretty cool. Obviously, they just kind of stick right into there, so you can pull them out if you really wanted to and kind of finish off the floor, I guess. But yeah, they're there and they work. And then off to the side here, we have this little panel thing with the sticker on there with the magnifying glass, if you will. And you can kind of see into the, the stars there, essentially, which is pretty cool. Kind of You see that in the movie for sure. Uh, very nice little addition there by Lego. We will get up towards the back section there in a moment, but I do want to take a look at these pillars that LEGO put in to basically create the feel of it being a room, which I feel don't really work because there is no big red back panel. They also did put red lining underneath the black floor to kind of recreate that it's kind of got that red uh, theme to it, red and black theme, but it doesn't really work. Underneath here, though, you'll find some items for the Praetorian Guards, and I have that focused in better. You can see there are some handcuffs, and a cup there so very nice little addition that lego is able to kind of throw into the side of the set where you have that little hidden compartment for the praetorian guards to kind of store stuff in and then you have a little control panel there and that is a sticker it's a new sticker looks pretty nice a complete shocker the other side of the set tells a similar story you'll find underneath 
a hidden compartment with actually a pretty cool weapon. I actually really like this. It's like a, a ball on a chain and you can hit Ray and Kylo Ren with it as a Praetorian guard. So that's an additional weapon for the Praetorian guards. I know I showed it off earlier, but it's pretty neat to have that hidden away in the compartment. The only other feature in the Snow Throne Room that is in this section of the set is gonna be right here. You have this little one by four plate. You can see it's a little bit loose there because you can push down on it really fast and Ray will jump into the air. Let's go. And she goes the wrong way, so you gotta make sure you put her on the right way. Or you can have her go either way, I guess. Maybe she jumps off the table. It just depends, I guess, on how you wanna try to do it. You can try to get her to go wherever. But uh, she, preferably she jumps towards Snoke, but I, I I can't replicate her jumping towards Snoke like they show on the box. Like, they totally show her jumping towards Snoke on the box, I think. Like, that's how I perceive it, but, like, I can't get it to happen. So, it's just kind of one of those lackluster features that I feel like they were like, ah, we don't have enough going on here, so, like... Let's just throw something in this section of the set that kind of fits in. And they found something that did fit in, but it doesn't really work as intended. Like, I, I've tried it so many different ways. I can't get her to go the way I want without just jumping this way and falling off the table into my hand. So. so kind of in the middle there, you have a little walkway that connects the main section where Snoke is to the section where the little elevator is. And let's take a look at that. So the rear section there holds what I would consider to be the final feature of the set. We have a little elevator basically where Ray comes down and out of to enter into Snoke's throne room. Of course you could throw those handcuffs on her if you wanted. That way she would actually be kind of the way she is in the movie, all cuffed up, walking into the throne room. But there are a couple of control panels on either side. There's a good view of the sticker inside of the elevator shaft, if you will, or on the outside of the elevator shaft there. And then you have the control panel sticker. And then you can even see the sticker behind Ray, which is basically like the lights, the typical Star Wars lights that you see a lot. So you throw the throne room guards there, the Praetorian guards, and then you can have Ray come on out of the elevator. You just use this little black circle on top to go ahead and spin to close it basically. And that means like the elevator's closed, she's coming down the elevator. And then when you get to the bottom, Ray comes on out of the elevator and she can walk on out. So let me explain to you why this was one of the worst building experiences I've ever had as well as give you my final opinion on the set. So I think the reason I really disliked building this set is because I was missing two pieces. So the first piece was this one by two dark bluish gray piece. I went back and double triple checked my work. It turns out I kind of screwed up while building the set for that one. So that's on me. But this next piece is not on me. It's actually pretty crazy. A little later on, I get to the final piece of this certain piece that I need and I can't find it. It's this black plate and it would be very easy to see and obviously I finished the set and still didn't find it and it was missing, just completely missing. You, I mean, like it wasn't there, but in its place, or at least I think in its place, I, I, like I don't even know where this piece came from, but it's a one by five Technic piece and it's like in brown, like it doesn't go with this set. It's very obvious. I checked in the back of the instructions, does not go with this set. I was very confused and I was like, well, uh, I guess that piece got replaced with that piece for some reason. So that was really odd. And I had to grab one of those black plates off of another set of mine to finish this set. So it was a pretty poor building experience. And I'm going to run a little experiment here soon to find out if this problem is widespread. I have not seen anyone else build this set yet, so I don't know. But time will tell, I suppose, whether or not my case is isolated or not. Anyway, what I think about this set, I did say I would compare it to the Death Star Duel set from a few years back. And you guys can see that Death Star Duel set was $80. This set was $70. Let that sink in. The difference in size and what you get for what you pay for is huge for $70 versus $80. This should be at most a $60 set. It's in a $60 box. It baffles me why Lego thinks they should be charging $70. And I'll say to you guys, if you think that Lego sets are overpriced, don't buy them. You have to vote with your wallet. Don't do what I do and just buy them anyway and then complain after because they're just laughing at you because they already have your money. You you're, you're making a mute argument, but if you vote with your wallet and you say, hey, that set is overpriced, I'm not going to buy it until it's on clearance or whatever it may be. Make that choice. Vote with your wallet if that makes any sense to you. Anyway, I'm very pleased with the minifigures. I like the set. I just can't like it for $70. And I also is kind of missing something that I thought they would throw in, which would be a huge red cape or something around the back here to kind of finish off the set and give it that iconic look from the movie that they just didn't do. And that was very disappointing. So 
I don't know how to feel about this one. $70 to me though is just plain overpriced. I get it, you got some new molds in this set, the Praetorian Guards are new, you gotta pay your employees, but geez, $70, there is not a lot here for $70. Bucks. Anyway guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'm curious what y'all think about this set because I don't have a very high opinion of it right now for sure. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Thank y'all for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Check out my other LEGO Star Wars reviews. Peace out.